What's going on? Welcome back to the Flow Bash channel. So glad to see your smiling faces right here in another video. If you're new here, my name's Eric. I am a freshwater fishing guide right here in Southeast Florida, primarily targeting largemouth, peacock bass, and what we're talking about in this video today, the bullseye snakehead. getting right into it, we're gonna go over my top three lures that I like to use to most effectively target the bullseye snakehead right here in Southeast Florida. And these techniques can also be used up there in the Maryland area going after that Northern snakehead. Man, those are some awesome fish too. Before we begin, I'll have links in the description for anyone interested in purchasing any of these lures. By purchasing through those links, it actually helps support the channel and I appreciate it very much. So getting right into it, here's the first lure. No surprise if you guys have followed this channel for any length of time whatsoever, it's a topwater frog. Now, you may think that you can just use any topwater frog to target snakehead, and while that may be true, I've been targeting these fish for the past 10, 12 years, and I've gone through a lot of different frogs that I like to use, and the one that I've landed on that I just really think outshines the rest of them for a variety of reasons is the Teckel frogs in particular. Now, there's two that I like to use. You've got this one in particular, which is the Teckel honker, and then they also have another one called the Maracker. Awesome frog as well. Both of these just seem to get the job done and they last a lot longer. Now, Teckle does have another frog called the Sprinker Frog, and this is the one that you will most often see in a lot of the tackle shops like Dick's and Bass Pro, and it has that little whopper plopper style tail on the back, but, you know, these work great, but the snakeheads, they just rip that tail off, so maybe have that as a backup, but don't primarily use that in my opinion anyway. So the reason why I like using these Teckle frogs is of course it's a hollow body frog. It has floating capability, so if you see a fish that's kind of wary or not fully committing, you can pause it, do some twitches, and the frog's not gonna sink out of where that snakehead's looking. So the eyes are in the top of the head, they're always looking up for the most part. And you know, being that it's a hollow body, it's just more durable. I used to use these soft plastic buzz style frogs. And while these do work great, there's a variety of situations where you might wanna use something like this. I typically go through like four or five packs of these when I go out for a day of snakehead fishing, not just because you know they do catch fish, but using these soft plastics, you're beating the bank. These just get wore out. Even if you don't even catch a fish, they just wear out and you can't even keep the hook in them anymore. And you have to peel it off put a new frog on the hook before it's even had a chance to catch a fish. So that's why I try and stay away from these. There's a time and a place, heavy vegetation, things like that. But most often than not, you'll be able to fish every situation with one of these Teckle hollow body frogs. And these little dangly bits right there, that's why I love using these frogs. Even though it's a hollow body, you just straight retrieve this and it does all the work for you. Same thing with the Maracker. Same thing with Mr. Backup, the Sprinker. They do have standard style hollow body frogs, but stick with the guys with the little feet or the ones that have the action. And that's, in my opinion, what works best. It's worked best for me. Put a ton of fish in the boat. Of course, you can use a traditional style hollow body frog with the little skirt legs, but um, guys, having to work those frogs and impart either the popping action like this popping frog or the walk the dog, Doing that for like 10 hours a day fishing for these snakeheads, it's just, you're covering water, your wrist is gonna fall off. So that's why the tackles with the, you know, the feet and the tails, that's, that's why I go to them because I can fish all day and not get arthritis. Number two on my list is going to be a spinnerbait or a chatterbait or bladed jig. Man, these things are an absolute game changer when it comes to targeting snakehead that just aren't pushed up on the bank and they're sitting a little bit deeper because you can vary the retrieve and creep these things along and get it down deep or you can just 
hold the rod tip up, maybe a faster retrieve to keep it higher in the water column. It's just, you can target fish at different depths really easily with something like this. And I like to go with a half ounce, nothing lighter, because you can keep this up really high, a few inches from the surface or creep it down low. And that extra weight's gonna help you achieve that. Now, something important you might be able to see is how thick of a gauge that wire is on this. That is so important when it comes to picking out a spinnerbait. This is from American Snakehead Customs. You can also use spinnerbaits that are designed to target musky. You really need a heavy, heavy wire because if you use just something off the shelf, like let's say a War Eagle or a Booyah spinnerbait, after a couple fish, you're probably gonna come back with nothing but the wire and the blades. And it still has the jig head and hook left in the fish swimming off into oblivion. So by going with a lesser quality spinnerbait, you can have some pretty big heartbreak. And of course, you don't want that fish to be stuck with that in its jaw. That's just not good. As far as chatterbaits go, I mean, guys, I'm a sucker for the Z-Man jackhammer. You don't have to use that, but these are just a really high quality chatterbait. Like I said, with the spinnerbait, you need that high quality. The only thing that you might wanna do is upgrade the snap swivel on this to something like maybe a tactic or tactical angler clip or you know they call them speed clips uh, that's gonna these things can bend out on a bigger fish with a really light wire other than that you're good to go as far as your trailers go for the spinner baits or chatter baits i like to stick with something pretty basic compact either like a swim bait or like a craw or something like that with little flappy tails. Uh, you just want a really compact presentation over that hook so that's what the fish is going to lock onto. Sometimes if you use a little too long of a trailer they're going to just bite the tail off, miss the hook. That's no bueno. So something like this Gambler Big Easy. Um, you can use the smaller one, the little easies that you won't have to cut but I'll typically cut like an inch off of this and put it on the spinner bait or chatter bait and that works or also something like this gambler burner craw. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a theme when it comes to my soft plastics, but uh, the burner craw also is excellent. You can see how it has those flappy tails that really grab the water and this thing will be kicking like crazy and nice and compact. So something like that is gonna work out really well. Always stick with natural colors. Basically the way you should think about colors when it comes to snakeheads is you're targeting snakeheads, but you wanna use bass colors just because you can get that off chance of catching a big lunker out there when you're targeting snakeheads. It's the best bycatch ever in my opinion, but that's the way I look at it. Otherwise, I mean, if you're just going after snakeheads, they will hit a rainbow colored lure. It doesn't matter. You can have, you know, frosted pink and they're gonna eat it because that's just their aggressive nature. They don't really care about color. I don't even know if they can see color, but it doesn't matter. So toss whatever, but personally use those natural colors because you could end up getting that awesome bycatch. So moving on to number three, and that's just keeping it super simple. You know, when it's real calm, maybe you have bright, just overhead bluebird skies, and it's just like, you can feel that high pressure in the air. You don't want something that's gonna vibrate or cause too much commotion. Just a regular old swim bait, guys. Gambler, big easy. The big easy, don't use anything smaller because it's just way too small. And if you guys maybe from up north are not used to tossing around a five inch swim bait, guys, this is a small swim bait in comparison. This will catch you so many one pound bass, but it'll catch you some big, big old snake heads, as you could see in this clip. Fuck. Dude, 100%. Oh, I'm smoked. Go. Oh yeah. It's a snake, dude. Yeah. He's about to take some drag. Fish. Here he comes. Uh, Scoop. Pretty bad. Oh. What does it say? 6'8. Six, 6'8, eight. Six, eight, solid fish. Okay. <laughs> so, in that clip, I didn't just have it rigged up plain with like a weighted swim bait hook. I actually had it rigged on a BKK Titan Rider weighted swim bait hook with 
a little underspin. I'd just been fishing the swim bait by itself without the underspin, and I was getting a couple falls, but nothing really committing, so I wanted to step it up just a little bit, just a little more like flash and vibration to see if that would draw out a strike, and it worked. Caught two really nice fish that day, and uh, that little underspin made all the difference. Like I wasn't getting bit, wasn't getting bit, just that subtle change. So having something like that, like these BKK Titan Riders with the underspin, it's a great little, just extra little spice to add to it if you know you need to make a subtle change when you're not getting bites. So having both on hand is a great option. So those three baits are pretty much all I use when I go out for a day of snakehead fishing, whether it's just me or I have clients on the boat. That's what puts them in the boat the most for me. Now there is another little, we'll just say a bonus bait that I'll show you guys that uh, depending on the fish and depending on what you're actually fishing will get you some more bites and maybe some fish that weren't looking to eat something on top or just might overall react to a slower presentation. And that's gonna be anything you can flip or pitch and also bounce the bottom down banks. Um, yeah, that's a thing where you flip into trees that you just, you know the bank is back there and you know it's only maybe a couple feet under this big bush, but you can't reach it with anything else. Well, flipping and pitching a creature bait such as, can you guess the brand? The Gambler's Ugly Otter, uh, something like this has gotten me a lot of bites as well, especially when you're just surrounded by shoreline that's covered in brush. You cannot get to it because typically these snakehead, they're gonna be in the shallow water feeding. If they're in the middle of the lake, you're never gonna catch them. I'd, I'd love to see it, but it's just not happening. When they come up shallow, that's when they're feeding and that's the fish you're targeting. So something like this to where you can flip with like an ounce and a half weight into the cover and then hit the bottom as close to the bank where normally you wouldn't be able to skip something. You gotta go crashing through it. Something like this is gonna work. And I have this rigged up on a little straight shank flipping hook. And this is what, a TK-130? Shout out Scott Martin. But a straight shank is gonna give you the most strength. It's not gonna bend out and you need something strong when it comes to snakehead fishing. They bust up everything. So something like that, you know, whatever you think's heavy enough of a weight to crash through all that cover, or if you're punching mats, that's also another viable option. And then if you have just a gradual drop off of a bank, you can cast it up shallow and just hop it down. And sometimes you'll hop it right into the mouths of snakeheads that are sitting down a little bit deeper, not quite up shallow to feed, but they're in that transition zone very viable option. Not a lot of people do that and uh, it's very effective. And before I wrap up this video, I know I get this question a lot. Why don't you use like a treble hook bait? If snake heads are so difficult to catch, why don't you use treble hooks? Because they hook everything and nothing can get away. That is kind of true, but I mean, the way snake heads are when you get them into the boat, if they have a treble hook lure in their mouth like a whopper plopper, they're flying around everywhere it's a dangerous situation. You're gonna get hooks in you. And also it's better for the fish, their mouths, the way that their mouths are equipped. You know, unfortunately it's happened where I'm fishing for bass and I catch a snakehead. They get tore up really, really bad with a treble hook in their mouth. And it's, they're difficult to get out of a snakehead's mouth too. It's not like getting them out of a large mouth or a peacock. So it's better for the health of the fish if you don't use treble hook baits. It's better for you for not getting hooked and just makes for an overall better day of fishing in my opinion. And those treble hook baits, you can't get them, you can't cast them into the areas, these heavy cover areas where the snake heads are. So just don't bring any. If you're coming down to Florida to target them for the first time, I uh, hope this video helps if you're planning on doing that because these are, these are gonna get it done, fellas and ladies. But also if you just wanna come out and book a trip, I'll be happy to put you on snake heads as well. My website is right over here flowbass.com. You can also hit me up on the gram at flow.bass. Same thing with Facebook as well. And I'll be more than happy to chat you up and plan a trip to best suit your needs. And we'll put some fish in the boat, whether it's snakehead, we can go after those clown knife fish everybody's crazy about, peacock bass, largemouth. That being said, I hope this video was helpful. Hopefully it'll help you put more snakeheads in the boat if that's your deal. And with that said, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in that next video. Peace out.